Today is June 14th, Sunday, uh, 2015, and I'm going to test the Mali, which I have uh, installed a uh, KD907 uh, on the front pilot with a special reinforcing bracket. And the coupler box has been modified by the, where the tang is to reset it back some, and the pilot has been notched just slightly in order to accommodate the box. And <coughs> the uh, tender has been also modified. It's been lowered and uh, where the air gap that you can see between the truck uh, and the uh, boiler or the frame here uh, is representative of a prototypical type uh, Vanderbilt tender. It's the Vanderbilt tender with the three axle Commonwealth trucks. And uh, also I have a body mounted uh, drawbar anchor where this drawbar from the loco uh, attaches to and I have a, th it's made out of a steel sort of like an S-band, 35 thousandths thick or so, or maybe a little thicker. <laughs> and uh, the threads on the post I put in here keep the drawbar from popping out like it used to with the, uh, with the smooth metal that the Aristocraft original had. The Aristocraft had a truck mounted um, uh, <coughs> drawbar anchor and this one is body mounted. And uh, the trucks were lowered by by actually flipping the frame underneath the bolster, the truck bolster, flipping it upside down and, and there was a pocket in the, the, what was the underside which now is the top side and uh, I put a spacer in there to get the proper spacing. So and then the, the rear of the tender uh, also has a KD body mount but it's a KD 905 type coupler and uh, it's on a square steel bracket I made and uh, it's proper height, of course, to match the KD gauge. And where there was a cutout here in the back, I put uh, plastic plugs and painted them. <coughs> so it looks a lot more realistic than it used to. And this test train is, has seven Union Pacific Streamliner cars on it. Plus I added two additional cars. Uh, on the back happens to be a Rio Grande one, and you can't see here <coughs> until I get it outside. And an SP, uh, a Rio Grande RPO, a heavyweight, and an SP... Uh, smooth side daylight car. So it's a total of nine cars and this test concerns pulling the train backwards now with the strength of this bracket holding it and if that bracket weren't there the pilot, this pilot mount here which is behind the cow catcher uh, is only held by two small screws one on either side of short lengths into this uh, platform floor and uh, if, if you just relied on that, the whole thing would just pull off the front of the loco from the, ex, from the extreme loading it would have to do. It's not an issue with the tender end, but it certainly was with this end here. So at any rate, the, I made like a U-shaped bracket, uh, 35,006 steel, and uh, it, it has to be fairly precisely made to fit properly. And the front wing kind of anchors right under the couplet post, sort of sandwiches over it and the sandwich is on the, the shank of the coupler box. And the rear is held down here where the motor mount screws are, which is the best point to, to mount it because the load is transferred directly across. So I'm going to run it outside now. We'll see what it does. So, so far the current draw and the power supply at this low speed is fairly minimal. Usually the current doesn't change too much um, as the voltage is increased so the power goes up accordingly. <laughs> so it looks like it's, what, a little over 2, 3 amps maybe. <laughs> so here it is exiting and I'll go outside here. We'll see what it does. So it's coming across the LGB reinforced bridge. Reinforced with steel because this engine weighs, the engine itself weighs 16 pounds or thereabout. Tender is about almost 5 pounds. Each of these Aristo Streamliner aluminum cars are about in the 5 pound area. And the heavy weights behind are maybe a little bit lighter, but uh, not too much. So I'll give it a little more power to put 
cool the grade and more speed. And we'll see if the wheels slip. The wheels didn't slip with the seven car train in the forward direction of the loco. So we'll see what it does here. It's pulling a, an average of 2.2% grade. It's more extreme in parts like back there and less extreme in other areas. Double, double loop in order to get up to my backyard here. Well, so far it's pulling all nine cars. There you can see the RPO and the, the SP Streamliner observation car at the end. Now the train's being pulled backwards so you see the Uni Pacific observation car where, the, where it's coupled to the pilot of the loco. So here is usually where it would tend to slip. So far it's fine. second part of the loop and that straight path back there is a little over eight feet or so and it's about two and a half percent right there so if it's going to slip it may slip there too but so far it seems okay. Here you can see the Vanderbilt tender going backwards with the locomotive. And it has a rear light on it that seems to work in the reverse direction. There's the effect of the drawbar, which is fine, and the coupler is holding up quite fine here quite well. So, pulling the grade with nine cars and we might be able to add a few more before the wheels start to slip. But this should be a pretty good test. Pulling this much weight up a grade that's in a circular path. Getting up to the upper level here. It's going to go on the outside loop by the fence. Now I'll have to switch this turnout here. So when it comes around, it won't go against the points. Well, it would, it would push the points on, but since the power frog is powered, you could have a short circuit when it goes over with the logo and some in the cars, depending on the happenstance of where the wheels are. <coughs> There's a slight clicking noise coming from the left front cylinder and uh, I determined having listened to it, it only seems to happen on curves um, in a certain direction. Here it's coming around the loop here. And uh, it looks like it's that little simulated rod that's going back and forth inside the piston that's making the noise to me. So I think it's not too harmful. Shank is. Hold repositioned 
in the back of the shank there from what it was. So mounted on the the uh, Mally's uh, pilot mount uh, on the hook. So formerly the coupler it used to be, it was an aristocrat uh, knuckle coupler. It was actually mounted on that coupler post on the shank, uh, the coupler shank on the post. And uh, so uh, in this case the the uh, shank of the KD907 box with the uh, repositioned hole is mounted on that post. There I can hear that clicking sound and I think it's coming from the little cylinder, the rod going in and out from what I can tell. <laughs> I know other folks have talked about uh, their experiences with the wheels going out of the uh, phase with the respect to the axle, and uh, that could be quite horrendous if that happens, but so far this thing runs pretty smooth. So what I'll do is get down here when it comes down over the viaduct and get a view of the front of it. <laughs> here as it comes around the tree. This is the test of the Mali in the reverse direction to see how the front uh, coupler works. And again, the front coupler is supported by a metal strap uh, where the mounting post of the coupler box is fastened to to prevent the front pilot from virtually pulling off the loco. It's going up the two and a half percent grade. Pulling the seven metal cars. <laughs> Trains being pulled backwards <coughs> from the observation car end. I can hear a clicking noise coming from the drivers on the engine and it seems to go away depending on what kind of curve it's on. <laughs> These engines have been noted for having their wheels go out of phase with respect to the axle because they're not keyed. But so far this thing seems to be running alright. <laughs> Thank you.
as you can see there's a light that comes on in reverse on the tender and the Vanderbilt tender there. And there you have it, a successful operating Mali with body mount, center set KD couplers, very strong, in either direction can pull a, pull a train. So if one were to double head this thing, uh, you'd have the confidence that it would work without doing any damage. And there you have it.